Hi, Bob Green here with Frontier Precision. I'm here today to talk to you about Trimble RTX, or Real-Time Extended. It's a satellite-based correction service from Trimble Navigation. Um, no base required, uh, no cell phone required. And here over the past couple years uh, has been specced at two centimeters uh, horizontally. Um, and uh, pretty exciting here over the last month or so, also um, service throughout the continental United States. So no matter where you travel, two centimeters uh, plus or minus uh, anywhere in the continental United States. Uh, Trimble uh, over the past couple months has also announced a 30 day free trial of um, Trimble RTX. If you have a uh, R10, R10 II, R12 or R2, um, uh, any of those receivers will work. They will send you a code and at the end of this um, uh, tailgate, we will show you a slide giving you the, um, the email address and the pertinent information for you to get your free 30 day trial. Um, so what I'm doing here is I am actually set up on a NGS published monument. It's a GPS site. It does not have um, a great vertical on it. So the vertical is only listed to the nearest foot. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple things that we can do here. In the latest release of Trimble Access, Trimble Access 2020, um, Trimble now uses um, uh, the, uh, the current uh, ITRF 2014 Epoch. Um, in older versions of um, Trimble Access, uh, even though the receiver um, uh, uh, computed a ITRF 2014 current epoch, uh, Trimble Access converted that to a ITRF 2008 epoch 2005 coordinate. That no longer happens. So that has freed up opportunity where we no longer have to do an RTK to RTX offset or any of those type of things like we used to have to do. Um, so we're getting a real-time state plane uh, coordinate because that's the coordinate system that I've chosen on my controller. Um, I'm also uh, going to do a stakeout to this point, then a one-point calibration to tighten up to local control because keep in mind, uh, Trimble's algorithm is CONUS for the whole United States, not specific to the local control in your community. So um, we're going to take a look at that and uh, I'll do a one point calibration and then go and stake out to the second point once I'm done. All right, here I am in Trimble Access. Um, and I'm at, on my stakeout screen. I'm looking at uh, about north-south, a little over six hundredths, uh, west a couple of thousands, um, and uh, I've got a fill of about a tenth, um, which for local control, that is uh, well within reason. If I would like to, to tighten that up, I am going to... Um, uh, do a one point calibration and then check into a second point. So I will go to measure, give it a name. And I've just changed my default here for an observed control point for about six epochs just to speed things up for this um, example. And here we go. And I will store it. And there are my Aztec deltas. And store. Observation stored. So now I'm going to go into my site calibration and do a one point. And my GNSS point. 
And I do have Geoid 18 um, also activated in this job. And good, I'm going to apply it. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, drive down the road to another point that I found. And so we'll see you back here in another minute. Okay, well here I am at point number two, my checkpoint. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to um, Trimble Access. And now we're down to a hundredth by three thousandths by uh, about a tenth uh, vertically. Again, these points are, um, are GPS only. So um, that looks pretty good to me. I think be a good time that I could possibly start my survey. Keep in mind everything we're doing right now is on state plane. Um, I will be switching it over to uh, Troy Hernandez who is at uh, one of our test facilities and he'll show you an actual RTX uh, site calibration to uh, local coordinates. Take it away Troy. Okay thanks Bob. Um... My name is Troy Hernandez and I'm in the Arvada, Colorado office and today we're going to be talking about how to do a no projection, no datum uh, site calibration with uh, Trimble RTX. Um, so here in Colorado with the RTX Fast, uh, we're getting initializations in under 30 seconds consistently. There are days that I can get it within uh, 10 seconds and I'm ready to, to start my survey. Uh, through the testing that we, Bob and I have done, we have uh, come to the conclusion that um, we're getting consistent results as long as the, the RMS on the vertical is 7 point, 0 0.07 um, hundredths, so 7 hundredths or lower, and we're getting a consistent vertical uh, shots. So that's kind of the sweet spot that we, we've discovered. Uh, we've done testing all the way from northern Colorado down to southern Colorado on NGS uh, monuments and we're seeing a consistency um, like I said once we hit that that 700 on the vertical precisions so my project is set up on a no projection no datum and I've entered uh, my site control and this is an arbitrary, arbitrary coordinate system so this is something like you would see on a constructed site where you're trying to match the surveying uh, control that's been provided to you and it's a non-published uh, site uh, coordinate system so i'm going to come in here and do a measure and measure site calibration okay my point that i'm on here now is point number one and in the site calibration method um, it's going to generate my, my GNSS point uh, with the uh, suffix of underscore GNSS for me. And this is set to measure 180 epochs for this particular point. Okay, um, our point has now been measured for the 180 epochs and I'll hit score. Um, you're going to see the, the typical site calibration menu show up. Um, you'll have point number one, horizontal residual is going to be zero, the vertical residual is going to be zero as well, until we get some more points in the in the database. So we're going to go ahead and get that one, and then I'm going to move on to my point number two. Okay, so now we're on point number two, and we're going to enter uh, the grid point name two, and underscore GNSS uh, pre-populates. And I'm going to just zoom in on the map to show where we're at in the site. This is the southwest corner of the job site. And we're going to click on measure. And as soon as I hit the store button, you're going to see the site calibration residuals pop up just like before. Um, this time you're going to see, unlike in previous versions, uh, a residual on the vertical. Now you got to be very uh, wary of what that residual is, is because it's taking a constant um, elevation and applying the, the constant shift um, on either either side of the point and we'll demonstrate that when we see it on the screen 
Um, now that the point's been measured for the 180 epochs, we'll hit store. And I'm going to have a split screen, so I'll show you what the screen looks like. Um, I'm showing a positive 100th on the vertical on point one and a negative 100th on point number two. So basically what I'm uh, showing is there's two hundredths difference between point number one and two. And it's, it's doing a constant shift, splitting the difference. Um, the minute I take point number three is when we'll start seeing um, uh, it back to all zeros on the vertical because it's a perfect plane at that point. Uh, on the fourth point, it'll show the, the standard deviations of all the points on the vertical. So we hit apply and move on to point number three. Okay, now we're on point number three. Uh, just like four, we'll enter point number three. And then we'll take a uh, shot. And I'm going to zoom out on the map. So this site is our uh, demo site where we do um, a, lot of, a lot of our testing for uh, VRS, for RTK, uh, especially our drones. Uh, whenever we get uh, new drones in, that uh, we come out and do our testing, um, doing our RTX testing on this site. Um, a lot of our training classes for um, baseline processing and static surveying are based on this site. So we have a pretty good control network on this site to do this comparison with. So we'll click on measure. Okay, now that point number three has been uh, stored and measured, uh, we get to the site calibration screen and here we see um, the vertical residuals are back at zero, like I mentioned earlier on point number two. Um, that's because now we're on a perfect inclined plane. So the residuals are going to be zero. Um, the other thing that we want to make sure we're doing is in the options screen, uh, we want our fixed horizontal scale set to one. That way we can see the true residuals uh, horizontally between all the points. So we'll hit apply and um, we'll zoom in and look at point number four and we'll head over to point number four now and can uh, finalize our site calibration. Okay, uh, now we're on our final uh, control point, number four, in our site calibration. And we're just going to zoom in on point number four to kind of show you that we're, we're on, we are definitely on point number four now. And we're going to hit store after the 180 epochs. And our site calibration screen, we start to see the, the vi uh, vertical residuals. And we see um, the horizontal vertical residuals as well. And we'll hit apply. Escape. And we are going to measure to our point number four. And we're seeing right now north a hundredth, east a hundredth, and a fill of three hundredths. Okay, so this concludes our site calibration with Trimble RTX Fast. Okay, as promised, here is the website information. If you'd like to try a 30-day um, code, uh, it's pretty basic. You'll need your serial number of the unit, uh, naturally your brand Trimble, your receiver model, um, and then you will pick Geospatial Continental uh, Centerpoint RTX 30-day trial and a little bit about your firmware. Um, and then you can have the passcode sent by mail where you'll uh, key that in to your receiver uh, on the web UI. Um, or you can have it sent via satellite. The um, There is another option is to do both. I'd recommend that. That way, if you have a problem with the satellite feed, you can get it by um, mail. Again, this is Centerpoint RTX, uh, uh, plus or minus two centimeters horizontally, um, RTX fast service. Uh, that would be uh, less than a minute for convergence or um, kind of a quasi-initialization. So um, thanks for attending.